Next up, I'm a big fan of dollar cost averaging. So when I saw this, I'm like, well, maybe I'm wrong. So Warren Buffett praises stocks, dollar cost averaging, but does it work for Bitcoin? Great question, right? So let's see what we got. So Warren Buffett, if you don't know, probably one of the uh, most prolific investors of all time, amassed a uh, fortune of a small country right, as far as what his uh, value is worth. But Warren Buffett has a message to young investors, dollar cost average into major stock market indices. So he's just talking about stock. He's not talking about Bitcoin, just saying, hey, if you want to get in a stock market, um, don't dump all your money all at once. Don't do trading. Just be an investor. Dollar cost average every week or uh, every month or whatever it is that you want. Every day, doesn't matter. And just take it slow. And over time, compounding interest, you're going to be probably way ahead. However, data shows that the same strategy has worked quite well for Bitcoin over the past decade. The question I had was, well, how well has it done? That's the big thing. So Cost dollar averaging into Bitcoin works, history shows. As an example, if an investor cost averaged $100 into Bitcoin since January 2014 and spent 35 grand in total, it would have been a return of 1,648% or around 589,000. So you could have made half a million on 35,000. That's not too bad, I think. But here's the thing, that's January 2014. And then the question I had was, well, are, they, are you talking about every day, every week? every 10 days, every month. I mean, what are you talking about? Because it doesn't really say here per se. So I went to this website. It is called BitcoinDollarCostAverage.com. Pretty simple. I'm going to link in the description. And I put the uh, same numbers in. 1-1-2014 one, one, and 100 bucks. And I did them all. And it is weekly. So if you put 100 bucks in a week since 2014, uh, you'd have a pretty good amount of money. Spend around 35,000. You got around 45 Bitcoin, not too shabby for 100 bucks. And that's, of course, not taking any profit when it went all the way up to 20,000. Just 100 bucks, 100 bucks, just brainless, just like whatever. But here's the question uh, What about after that big parabolic warrant? So on August 6th, the price of Bitcoin was at 11.7 on Binance. At the time, researchers at Coinmetrics said that if an investor dollar cost average into Bitcoin, since it's 20,000 high, it would have returned a 61% gain, they stated. Despite Bitcoin still trading 30% below all-time highs, dollar cost averaging from the peak of its market, which is around 20 grand, would have still returned 61% or 20% annually. So probably better than the stock market, because if you're looking at like 5 to 8%, that's a great year in the stock. I mean, that's like stupendous, especially for all these uh, fund managers who claim that they can do like just magic things. Uh, 8% is like far and away pretty grand great. So I still think I'm like, ah, it's not really that, not that fantastic. Really, if you think about it, 20%, you're like, ugh. In, in crypto, that's like not a big deal. So here's the crux of it. Dollar cost averaging has worked for Bitcoin because Bitcoin can have extreme corrective phases, but... During bull runs, when infrastructure and fundamentals significantly improve and an institutional craze occurs, its value can increase rapidly. Around March, the price of Bitcoin went to 3600 Remember that? Fantastic day. If you picked it up, congratulations for you. But as of November 1st, Bitcoin's price is above 138 up more than threefold cents. So there has to be a little bit more to just brainlessly dollar cost averaging 100 bucks, 100 bucks, 100 bucks, 100 bucks. And there was a little piece. I can't remember if it's from Paul Tudor Jones or somebody else, but they talked about dollar cost averaging and they would increase by 10%. Oh, I know who it was. It was Jim Cramer. And he talked about it when he was interviewed by Anthony Pompliano. He was talking about dollar cost averaging into Bitcoin. And he said, once it dips, you know, by 10% or 5%, or actually just like 3%, I think it was, he said that he would increase uh, his dollar cost average price by another 10%. So as it goes down, he would actually increase the amount of money that he puts in. And then, of course, when it goes up, he would start to just stop a little bit or uh, reduce the amount. And I thought it was pretty smart. That's actually what I've been trying to do. As things go down, I start to put a little bit more money into it, which is the exact opposite of what your brain tells you to do. Because, you know, we're like, hey, it's going up. Let's buy some more. But that's not how it works. You're supposed to invest as things start to take that little those little steps downward. So that would have been a perfect time when Bitcoin went down around uh, 3,600, below 4,000 in March. It's actually just start to really, uh, you know, put a lot more money into it. But it's hard to do because it's like, 
you're like, oh, it's going down, so it's not really worth too much. But you have to go against that that thinking and just try to take the emotion out of it and go, this is the plan. This is what I have. And you set an emotion and you just stick to it. And that's the big thing, just sticking to the plan, whether that be dollar cost averaging down or doing your exit strategy. Uh, and for everybody who's new to the channel, I'll link my exit strategy at the very end where I talk about uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and XRP, how I want to exit for all three of those. And that's it. So let me know what you think in the comment section. But again, you can dollar cost average, you can trade, you can do whatever you want to do. I tend to like dollar cost averaging because it's kind of like set and forget it. When things are to go down a little bit, you put a little bit more money in. And when it goes up, you kind of like decrease a little bit. But that's what I see. All right, let's move on.